All right, all right, all right, all right. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm coming at you live. I pick out a couple of tweets from recent weeks, and then I riff beyond what however many characters Twitter gives me, allows me to say. Provide a little context, a little practical application, whatever it may be. And then on Wednesdays, the revolution will be live streamed. That's my brother Kamau and I, usually with a special guest, talking about what's going on in the world and how to use big ideas to create small changes that have an outsized impact in your everyday life. All right, uh, I'm excited about today's topic. This is some common misunderstandings about being supportive and being content. If you're interested in being a good friend or being a good person, living a flourishing and free life, you have probably asked yourself before or given some thought to what does it mean to be a supportive person? What are the boundaries around that? And what does it mean to be a content person? We hear a lot of uh, scriptures in the Bible. We hear a lot of philosophers of happiness tell us things like be content, be content, just learn to be content. And what does that mean? Does that mean settling? Does that mean just not having any ambition? I'm gonna talk about that today. And so let's go ahead and dive right in with tweet number one. We're gonna start with this whole bit about support. All right, here's the tweet. How to show appreciation for someone's passion without being fake. Replace a phony, that's awesome, with a curious, I'd love to hear more about why that excites you. You don't have to like what a person likes in order to appreciate the narrative behind why they like it. First, I like to give shout outs for the comments, the questions, the replies that come at me when I tweet. So let's give a shout out to brother Matthew Zicky, who posted this comment, which gave me a good laugh. He says, I feel personally attacked. Uh, I say that's awesome all the time, LOL. Granted, it's usually in uh, uh, con connection with a more complete response and, you know, um, it's blurry, can't see it. Anyway, <laughs> Matthew, I appreciate the comment, man. Matthew's a friend of mine. I know that he's joking around, but it's kind of funny because one of the things you'll notice when you uh, put your ideas out there, when you start writing things along those lines, you'll get some family, some friends, people that hit you up in the DMs and they're like, yo, was that about me? Did you write that about me? There, there are times where I've made observations about things that had nothing to do with other people in my life. And I wrote about it. And then right before I hit the publish button, I was like, oh man, that sounds a little too similar to what my friend over here, what my student over there is, is going through. And I don't want them to think I'm you know, talking about them and then I censor myself. So a big part of writing is just learning not to censor yourself, learning to say what's really on your heart and on your mind. All right, anyway, asides aside, what's this all about? This whole idea of how to show appreciation for someone's passion without being fake. Well, the context comes from my appearance on an episode with The Minimalists. Uh, if any of you know about The Minimalists, or I mean, you don't know about The Minimalists, go check out their podcast, awesome podcast. But the idea behind minimalism is creating space for meaning and value in our lives by breaking free of this attachment that we have to things, to stuff, right? And so a lot of people who identify as minimalists talk a lot about simplicity. And there was someone who called in and they expressed an interesting, interesting dilemma. They said they have a friend that's very materialist, very ambitious, and they're always excited about some new accomplishment. Usually things like, hey, I just upgraded from a three bedroom house to a five bedroom house. I'm balling y'all. Or, hey, look, I just bought a BMW or I just bought my third car. And this minimalist person was saying that they they find themselves saying things like, oh, that's great. That's really awesome. I'm really happy for you. When deep down inside, they're really judging that person saying, you know what? You don't even need a BMW. You know what? You don't even need a five bedroom house. And so the question was, how can I stop doing that? First of all, because I don't want to be pretentious, but I also don't want to be a jerk. I also don't want to be the person that's like, I don't care because I do like this person. They are my friend. How can I be authentically supportive? when it seems like the project or passion I'm supporting is so inconsistent with my values. And this is something that comes up for all of us, minimalists or not,
because we all have relationships with people that are going to get excited about things that don't particularly excite us. Somebody might have, you know, bought a new video game and you're not into video games. And they're like, oh, yo, I'm so excited. I got this new video game. And you either have to say, so what? I don't care. Or you got to say, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You know, uh, lying through my teeth about how excited I am for you. So I want to split the horns of that dilemma and show you how to be supportive without being fake. And it's very simple. Shift the conversation from what a person loves to the actual person that you want to show support for. Instead of trying to make yourself feel excited about this other person's passion or accomplishment, show your natural excitement for the person by asking them to tell you, what is it about that thing that makes you so excited? So for instance, if someone's into basketball like me, and you have someone like my wife that's not really into basketball, something that she's done for me before. She said, hey, why do you like basketball so much? And then I go into some kind of narrative about why these games mean so much to me. I say things like, well, you know, I love the spirit of competitiveness in basketball. You know, sometimes you step on the court and you're getting ready to go up against a team that's statistically better, but you don't take a loss just by virtue of the fact that another team is better than you. You still have to play the game. You still have to actually make an effort. And so sometimes it's not just about winning or having a realistic chance of succeeding. Sometimes it's about playing with the spirit of pride. Sometimes it's about showing up and saying, maybe I will lose, but I'm not going to take the L without putting forth an effort. And then she hears me say that and she understands something valuable about what makes me tick. And that can be separated from basketball. And she doesn't have to be excited about basketball in order to connect with me on a level of the reasons why I'm excited. And that's what you can do for other people. So to go back to the example of someone that's excited about a BMW, instead of saying, oh yeah, that's awesome, when you don't really think that, or instead of saying, so what, you know, I, I despise you for caring about that, you can say, hey, tell me about that. Why does that matter to you? Why is that so important to you? And people love it when you're curious about them. They love talking about themselves. They might say something that surprises you. They might say something like, well, you know, when I grew up, I couldn't afford a car like that. And I remember one day as a kid, I saw a BMW and that was like my first dream car. And I said, one day, one day I'm going to make that happen for me. And over the course of my life, I've worked hard. I've created a lot of opportunities for myself. And, you know, technically, I don't even think the BMW is the best car out there, but it symbolizes for me the possibility of saying that you're going to do something life in life and then getting out there and making it happen. And so when I bought that BMW, it felt like I was giving a gift to my childhood self. And it felt like my life came full circle. And every time I look at that BMW, even though it's not the best car in the world, I think to myself, that represents for me the possibility that we can make things happen, that we can fulfill a dream. And wouldn't that be inspiring to hear? Wouldn't such a story tell you something so valuable about a friend? And you don't even got to pretend to be excited about BMWs in order to get that story. All you have to do is be curious. So if you want to be supportive, understand being supportive is not about loving the things that other people love. It's not about us all being excited about the same things. One of the beautiful things about a diverse world is that we're all fired up by our own different things. And that's what makes us unique. That's what makes the world awesome. And we don't have to pretend to be something that we're not. Instead of focusing on what people are fired up about, focus on the reasons behind the fire. Express curiosity towards that. And that's all the support that you need to show. All right, we're about to go to tweet number two, but let me pause and say every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, for those of you who are tuning in, we are here live at 12 p.m. Eastern time for the Revolution of One live streams. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do TK's Two Cents, where I take a couple of tweets and I take you beyond the limited number of characters that I get on Twitter and provide you with a little context or story behind what made me tweet that. I should call it that. What made me tweet that? And then on Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern time, the Revolution will be live streamed. That's my brother Kamau and I, and we're here with a special guest talking about what's going on in the world and how you can take big ideas and use them to create small changes that have outsized results and implications in your life. All right, let's go to this second tweet because we're, talk, we're, we're about to talk about being content. And this is a big one right here. This is a real big one. Biblical contentment doesn't mean I'm going to treat my life as if it's already finished. 
It means I choose to honor and bring forth the endless hidden potential of the present moment. Contentment is a dynamic process of creating, not a static process, not a static state of settling. Okay, so uh, I want to give a shout out to Hannah Rosenberg who put this comment up. She said, "Hmm, interesting. Maybe I like that comment because Hannah, that's all I need is a maybe. That's all I need is a maybe. You know, when you first begin to write or put your ideas out there, uh, you, you kind of uh, you know, feel pressured to to say the last word on a topic. You kind of feel pressured to to make sure that everything that you say is so tight and so precise and so right that it couldn't possibly be disagreed with or misinterpreted or misunderstood. But you start to realize as you do this more that the goal is really to just challenge other people to think critically and creatively about the things that we take for granted. So if you can just make someone pause and say, hmm, interesting. Maybe you have accomplished so much. So Hannah, thank you for that comment. I'm glad that you gave me that. That's all I ever ask any of my readers for is a hmm, interesting, and maybe. So let's talk about this. A lot of times when people think about contentment, they, they tend to think about it in contrast to this attitude that says happiness comes from always being in the striving mode. Happiness is the result of having a bunch of things. And so I'm going to get more stuff. And, and if I can just accumulate enough stuff, well, one day I'll be happy. Or I'm just going to achieve more things, more and more success, more and more success. And one day I'll get to the mountaintop and I'll be happy. And, and that day never comes, right? You never have enough stuff. You never have enough success. You're never really satisfied. And so since our concern with contentment is often born out of a response to these unhealthy perspectives, we usually think about contentment solely in terms of subtraction. A, a, a contentment is not that, right? Contentment is, you know, minus the preoccupation with stuff. A life minus the preoccupation with stuff. A life minus obsession with achievement. And the problem with that is that even though we capture something important with that understanding of contentment, we sort of overlook all the proactive, creative, dynamic components of contentment. And this is why I said biblical contentment, because in the biblical worldview, we are all here with the purpose. And that purpose is to be fruitful and multiply. And what that means is we are to take this world that we have been given and we are to use our sense of creativity to make more of the world than it was when we got here. We are all here to have an impact on the world. We are all here to make our mark on the world. We are all here to make a difference. And so whatever contentment is, it cannot be an attitude that says, I'm finished. I'm done. I'm not here to grow anymore. I'm not here to give anymore. I'm not here to help anyone. I'm not here to learn anything new. That's one of the most anti-biblical conceptions of contentment that you can possibly come up with. That is not what contentment is, because as long as there's breath in your body, as long as you are here, you are here to make a difference. Now, that doesn't mean that you're here to make a difference in a way that puts you on the cover of Forbes magazine. That doesn't mean that you're here to make a difference in a way that brings millions or billions or in a way that's glamorous or materialistic or anything along those lines, but it means that you are here to make an impact, however small, however quiet. So contentment can't mean giving up. Well, what does it mean? We need to understand two different way, ways of looking at achievement. A lot of times when we think about achievement, we think about it as something that that comes from a fear of lack. My life is not enough. I don't have enough things. I don't have enough happiness. So I'm gonna work and I'm gonna try to achieve things because that will fill the missing pieces and empty spaces in my life and make me happy. But there's another way to look at work. You can also look at work as something that comes from a place of abundance, a consciousness of plenty, a consciousness of creativity. And you can say, I'm not working, because I'm afraid of losing. I'm not afraid of working because I need to fill the empty spaces. I'm working because my life is already filled with abundance and I want to be generous with the abundance of ideas and enthusiasm and creative energy that I have. And so I'm not working to get something, I'm working to give something. My work is not an expression of discontent ambition. My work is an expression of abundant creativity and generosity. That is contentment. 
and contentment is dynamic. So whatever you do, by all means, avoid this fallacious form of reasoning that says, you know, I'm going to be happy if I just get enough stuff. By all means, avoid that. But don't equate contentment with sitting back and saying, I guess I have nothing new to learn and nothing new to offer. So I'm just going to sit back. Life is all about growth and generosity. And as long as you are alive, you have the capacity to grow in new and exciting ways. And you have the capacity to be generous in ways that make the world better for you and for others. And you don't have to do that with a consciousness of scarcity. You can do that with a consciousness of abundance. And when you do, you have found true contentment, the contentment that is alive and filled with joy. All right, y'all, that's it. That's TK's two cents for the day. I will see you next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time right here on Twitter. If my ideas inspire you or help you in any way, share it with a friend. You know, put, post it on your Facebook or your Instagram, your Twitter, share it far and wide, tag somebody that you know, help me get these messages out there and I'll see you next week. Peace.